Praise God. Greetings to you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. It's easy to get stuck in life and think that nothing is going to work. You are not at the mercy of your problems. You are not at the mercy of your sickness, hurts and accidents and people against you. None of that can stop your destiny in Christ. What's holding you back is your own thinking. Jesus said, you cannot pour the new wine into your old wine skin. You have to change your old wine skin. If you think your problem is too big, it is. But if you think you can solve your problem, God will be with you. Let's get into our message. The title of our message is, You Need Your Inner Man's Strength at All Time. We read in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. Apostle Paul says, So we do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away, inner self is being renewed day by day, for this momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. If you are in Christ and if you know you have received the grace of God, you should learn to live by the grace of God every day. That grace will protect you from all your discouragements, disappointments, sadness, fear. So don't waste away your grace that God has invested in you. That is so valuable for you. Paul says here, though their outer self is wasting away, inner self is being renewed day by day. He's writing it here, Second Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. He's telling, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is renewing and getting strengthened day by day. Hmm? That should be our testimony in Christ. Otherwise, you will have no use of Lord Jesus Christ in your life. You will be like any other person in this world. So here, the outer man, the physical person, the using of the phrase outer man and the inner man shows three parts of human, that is body, soul and spirit. And our outer man perish because of outer circumstances of life and distress. Our outer bodies are almost worn out with fatigue, sorrow under the burden of our trials, isn't it? We are tired, we are tired of the problems. That is life. Without troubles, there is no life. But our inner man should be strengthened along with these troubles. You should learn to live that life. That is the reason you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Our spirit contains the inner man. With our spirit, God will communicate. We are three-part people, three-part being. The body we can see, outer man, and we have a soul inside. Soul is the part where we think. Now also you are thinking, listening to me, but you are thinking something. Okay? Then inside one more person is there, that is our spirit. Okay, so we should get strengthened from that spirit. That's why Jesus came inside. So how do we get strengthened in our spirit? Through our mind. Listen to me very carefully. You need today's message. Please understand. because. Without strength, nobody can live in this life. You can only blame your circumstances. You can only blame everything else around you. Hallelujah. So our spirit contains the inner man. Our spirits are the spirit where the spirit of God commune with us. The inner man contains the conscience upon God's spirit to move and convict sin and righteousness. Our spirit have the knowledge of right and wrong. You have a spirit. With that spirit, God communicate. So that you can understand about your sin, God is what? God is righteousness, isn't it? Huh? God doesn't want people to live in sin. God wants us to be righteous. So God will be communicating to us about the wrong things that we are doing. At the same time, what are the right things? So our spirit will be hearing if we are sensitive to God. So in Christ, we have to learn to strengthen our inner man with our souls. We choose either to listen to our flesh or to the desires of the spirit. 
in our mind we will choose whom to listen can we live like the people of this world or can we live a godly life it is your choice eh? you can decide and always this mind will be struggling for that all of our lives are filled with troubles pain and ill treatments jesus never promised us a life free from all these troubles he encouraged us in john 16:33 here on this earth we have troubles and sorrows and take heart i have overcome the world that is what jesus christ has promised us and paul and christ in acts 14:22 through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of god don't forget all these scriptures we need inner strength to live every day so let's understand it's great need for us to be strengthened in the inner man who will strengthen the inner man you how do you maintain your physical body you you are eating good food you are going to gym you are building your outer man isn't it you want good physique you will go and gym eh you will shape your body and you eat good food who is doing all this you you are maintaining your body that's why you are here like how you are see in the same way inner man we need inner strength even physical strength we need physical strength how do we get we know by eating good food in the same way inner strength we need who should make the initiative you should you should understand the need of your inner strength and you should take initiative and you should build your inner man proverb 24:10 says if you fail under pressure your strength is too small from where do you get the strength from god almighty exodus 15:2 and psalms 28:7 pressure every day is a part of life how are you handling the pressures of your life do you quit blame others fed up avoid escape fight or get angry and irritated and bitter you want to run away from your problems if you are dwelling in all these feelings with each problem dear friend understand your inner strength is zero you don't have inner strength every problem is tiring you in every problem you are getting angry i am telling in christ the people who don't have christ they don't know how to deal with their life i am talking to the people who are in christ you should know how to build your inner man hallelujah much is said in god's word about our mind and thoughts what we are supposed to do with them and our every victory is depends upon how we think our inner man gets strengthened through our soul that is our mind our mind is the greatest power we have hmm? more than your intelligence you may be telling i am very intelligent i am very educated i just read anything i can understand i can grasp eh so i have good education education is not a problem for me if you are that person hmm? good that is good but if your mind power is zero with your education also i tell you my friend you will crash you will be flat because you cannot live in this life without having problems when every day don't think that you are a surprise don't think that your problem is too big everybody thinks that his own problem is too big like me there is no one everybody thinks that you should go and mingle with the people then you can understand if you are living a secluded life me 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 you always think that your problem is a big problem go and see how each person is living they may be having a plastic smile but inside of inside only god knows and they know hallelujah and prover 23:7 is a familiar verse for christ way church people i keep explaining about this scripture which says as he thinks in his heart so is he as you are thinking in your heart that is how you are today your thoughts are making you like how you are today how you are today that is all the creation of your own thoughts but many christians have never heard this verses they are ignorant about this and their mind power and they are ignorant about the power of their thought life but this verses is giving us major spiritual secret in being able to acquire good mental health in the lord and supernatural blessings from god you are what what you think 
even after you are in christ if you are not changing your thought life you will not be happy you will be always pessimistic you are depressed all the time you have negative attitude towards anybody and everything always you will have negativity anger bitterness jealousy all these things will be in you hallelujah if you are not changing your thought in christ according to the word of god jesus himself said that we would all have to go through various types of trials and tribulations in this world from time to time never forget this verse my dear friends when a problem comes if you are in christ you should not crash like the people who don't have jesus christ i beg you i repeat this scripture and i always bring this scripture about your thought life and the power of your mind hmm? the worldly people are getting the mind power and somehow they are living positive thinking how long you can have positive thinking hmm? god will help you to think the right thing and you will be powerful in this world please understand hallelujah never live depressed never live your life in worries anxieties and fear what god said rejoice always be peaceful always this world cannot give you peace only me this is what jesus christ told and he said it is not like the way the world is giving you peace i am giving you my peace that means god's peace godly peace what we need is god's peace isn't it we may be peaceful when everything is good and everything is happening according to our will according to our desire then we are all happy we will dance but anything goes wrong nobody can see your address you are not in your address you are disappeared somewhere isn't it so that is not your christian life hallelujah for many it has become an actual mental stronghold last week we have learned because they have been practicing to dwell in their depressions and negative thinkings from long time that is from their childhood they have not learned to change so in christ you have to change your mindset now let's read the scripture completely and understand proverb 23 7 actually i have not taught you the complete scripture i have taught only the first part of the scripture let's read this whole scripture proverb 23 7 for he is like one who is inwardly calculating eat drink he says to you but his heart is not with you i'm going to explain this this proverb warns against accepting hospitality from a begrudging and generous tinchi mean spirited host and comparing our heart with this host even though he has invited you for lunch or dinner he doesn't want you to eat his food and drink at his expense he is calculating the cost of the food that he is serving you he is actually resistant hmm? this is a truth you have to understand be careful if you sense there may be something in genuine about someone who is appearing to be hospitable to you if you are not wise enough to deal with them they will end up giving pain in you through their hidden motives for their outward niceness many people are outwardly nice but inwardly you will know these people in the long run if you mingle with them for a long time you can understand who is who hallelujah so that is not the subject here the warning here is twofold first know that some people don't say what they are in their heart they are not what they are outside you see them for instance in the proverb this greedy man doesn't really want you to eat and drink that he supplies though he has invited you he has invited you but he is calculating how much each dish is costing him okay and second important warning is that if you are invited to eat with this man it would be better to decline because every bite you eat is calculated by your guest there will be a price to pay later because he is doing business with you he is inviting you for his benefit he has some benefit that's why he is called for dinner or lunch okay so this proverb warns us about our own heart this guest is our heart oh you may be thinking oh i should not go to that friend i know him mm, next time let me not go to such people god is not explaining about your relative or your friend i mean bible is telling you can understand such people mm? 
So come to the point. This host is our mind. This proverb warns about our own heart comparing with the begrudging host. Even though there may be appearances of generosity, your host's heart is not with you. This proverb is teaching us the truth about the person lies inside. There is somebody like this stingy person is there inside of many. This person is stingy. He is calling you for dinner. But he is calculating even the juice that he gives you. Oh, this much I am spending for him. Hmm? He is calculating. Such a person is where? Inside of you and me. We should recognize that person. Bible is telling. Don't think that you are a very good person. Eh? Like you, there is no one. In this world, there is no good person. Jesus Christ has called us to become good people. That's all. Hallelujah. So he may not always match with the outward behavior. That means your mouth may say, I love Jesus Christ. I want to follow his ways. I am ready to carry his cross. But your heart, that dedication and submission is from where? From your mouth. You are telling. that too. Before pastor always you will tell, pastor I will submit. I have submitted. Already I have submitted. I will work. I want Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. Hmm? But inside of inside. You should recognize the stinginess of your heart. Your heart is stingy. Hmm? It's a warning. As a person's actions are not always indicative of his true heart. So, you would be careful about yourself. That you are saying or acting before people are not from a true heart. Check your heart. Is it ready to pay a price to live a pure and holy life? Are you ready or are you stingy? Are you getting my point? Let's understand what this proverb is teaching us really. I will make you understand. Compare your life with the stingy person who has invited you for food. Proverb 23.7 He is calculating the cost he has spent for you for his benefit and he is making a business with you. In the same way, your heart has accepted Jesus Christ. You are taken baptism. You are coming to Jesus Christ. You are coming to church every day. That's fine. Hmm? But there is somebody inside you. He is calculating. Whatever you are spending for that time. Oh, a Every Sunday morning, 7.30 is service. I am getting up early and I am coming. I am reading Bible. I am praying. I am doing evangelism. Etc, etc, etc. For what? To make business with Jesus Christ. You want something from Jesus Christ, isn't it? Are you ready to change and be holy like Lord Jesus Christ? Are you go out? And tell the people about Lord Jesus Christ. He is not a Christian God. Church is not doing conversion. Jesus Christ came to convert our heart towards God. That's all. This is called conversion. Conversion. This is not religious conversion. Conversion is happening in the heart. Jesus Christ has come to make a person good. Not outside. We know how to become good. Enough beauty parlors are there in every very straight. Next to you only there is one beauty parlor. But still you don't go there. You will catch a cab and go to other place. Isn't it? Do you go to nearby? That is local. Hmm? But those people there they say that is local and come to your area. Isn't it? See that is how we are. We know. Weekly two, three times how many people are visiting beauty parlor and every day two times gym. Morning one time gym. Evening one time gym, hmm? building the body. You know how to look good eh? and getting good, good dresses. What is not there? You will see in online and you will go to the shop and buy so that you can have a real look. Online may deceive you. There you can have a real look. Isn't it? Everything you will do. Hmm? For what? For whom? It is for you. Isn't it? Everything you are doing for you. The same way you have accepted Jesus Christ, you love Jesus Christ, you are coming to church, you are reading Bible, you are worshipping, you are even going every Sunday, one time, 
evangelist of somebody has got dedicated soon after the church i am in the street for jesus christ hmm? you should know are you making a business with jesus christ or do you want people to know this christ do you want jesus christ to be known as a real god he is not a christian god your heart intention only god knows you are like this host hmm? he is calculating even one juice he has given you he is calculating i should get something from this person next time i will see <laughs> Barre, bunny, five star or seven star hotel, ho gana. Hmm? He will take you to seven star hotel. Something he needs from you that you don't know. In the same way, you are in Christ. You are praying. You are doing evangelism. Check in your heart for what you are doing. Don't do drama. Don't do drama. I don't want anybody to do drama and go for evangelism. Your heart should be burning for this God. Nobody should misunderstand who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ came, died on the cross for your sin and my sin. We are all sinful people. We cannot control our anger, jealousy. You think this will give us good life? In your own family, husband is hating wife. wife is hating husband children are hating parents parents are hating children fight 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 this is family just because some people are living under one shelter in the name of husband wife children parents that is not called family family should be like heavenly family Ham family was god's intention A man or a woman should not be alone. He need a partner for what? Eh? Some days you live happily, then sit and fight. No, life law that love should be growing in you. You should be together, loving each other. You should have loving kids. You should teach them and grow them according to the word of God. Hmm? A heavenly family. This is why Jesus Christ has come for a good life, a healthy life, a prosperous life, everything. You should not borrow money. You should be a lender. Borrowing money is a curse. Sicknesses are curse. Family fights. Family disunity. All are curse. They are not the blessing from God. Blessing from God is. family unity love in the family health in the family money in the family we are enjoying life god has given us life to enjoy my friends don't think that if you come to christ you will be like a secluded person sitting on the mountain top not knowing anyone no you are into the world go to the world and do evangelism go and give this jesus christ to the other people that is called your evangelism otherwise each sunday you are going for evangelism you are calculating i went god has to give me some blessing i did this much of ministry but still why god is not giving me some blessing lord i have done that i have done this eh? easy way you want to go to heaven heaven is in my hand heaven is in my hand full time dance heaven is too far from you heaven is in your heart heaven is in your heart what is that purity holiness if that grows in you yes you can sing that song heaven is in my heart heaven is in my family i will build my family today we have sang that song i will build my church huh you should build your family from your church you will build your family understand don't think that you have only one physical family when you of your caring too much about your physical family i'm not telling that you should not care you have second family that is church care your church we are not asking your money your heart to the church church is people church means people care the people 
care the existing people, care the new people. Please understand. Huh? So when you have a leave, you will be planning. When you have holiday, you will be planning. Oh, today I have to do this. I have so many pending work. All this you will do. But what are you doing for the church, my dear friends? For your second family? Today I am talking about such people's heart. Proverbs 23, 7 is about such people's heart. One day, holy day, you want to sleep. Pending sleep on holy day. Pending work on holy day. Do you know that you have so many pending spiritual works? You should spend more time in studying the word, praying, meeting with the people. Hmm? If you are not doing that, Proverbs 23 7 is talking about you, dear believer. Mind it. Hallelujah. So, you are calculating the cost you are paying or paid for your benefit. That is all your spiritual activities you are seeing and thinking, why God is not blessing me? So much I prayed, so much I worshiped, so many times I went to church. I didn't miss even one meeting. I was asking pastor to have one more meeting. Why only two meetings? So like English meeting and Kannada meeting. I want some Urdu meeting. My regional language is Urdu. Hmm? Or some other. I want in that also. Pastor, you are pastor. You learn and translate. Hmm? Pastor has to do all the Lord. I will be there looking after only my family. You to join with me, I can do. With your support, I can do everything. Hmm? But if you are only building your family, one more language if you are telling me to do, it will be difficult. I have to translate. You know how I am doing Canada service. Eh? In the same way, don't think that I won't be able to do. I can do. With your support. But if you are not supporting me, I cannot do anything. Hallelujah. I will always tell, Christ way will never come to you or to your house for money. Never. But Christ way will come to you for your heart. Don't get offended. Because God wants your heart. That is the reason we are not even taking offerings in each service. If we are taking like every other church, we can have a lot of money. I don't want people to stamp the church as a money-making place. Church is not a money-making place. Church is a place to transform the hearts of the people. That is Christ's way, church. Hallelujah. So dear believers in Christ, Please understand the stinginess of your heart. God has given us the responsibility to renew your mind, cleansing the thoughts of your hearts. It's high time for you to realize what you are thinking and be responsible for your thought. One holiday came, what you are thinking? Oh, what I should do? Oh, you want biryani madana? Just one week, na nee maad lilla. Eh, bari chitra na adalla maadi thindi. What the biryani, chicken, kebab, ella maadi thindi, mutton maadi thindi. Yake beef. Hmm? Already you have calculated. Hmm? On the way from office only, you will be buying. You will load your vehicle and come to enjoy your holiday. Or to go with someone else. Already you have planned, isn't it? Thoughts, I am talking about thoughts. What you think, you will do. And you are doing. Hallelujah. So it's high time for you to realize what you are thinking. And be responsible for your thinking. And think like the word of God and grow in the purity of your heart. Keep changing your negative and sinful heart and then your inner man will get strength. I am teaching about how you get the strength from inner man. Nobody has to teach you how to beautify outside. Nobody has to teach you how to strengthen your physical body. But who will teach you to strengthen your inner man? church, Christ. You have to come to Christ for this beautification. You have to come to church. You have to come to Christ's beauty parlor for your inner beautification. Hallelujah. What you think and how you think affect your heart. What you think and how you think will affect your, your heart, your physical heart. You have a heart problem today. Are you a heart patient? Change your thoughts. You will be healed. Change your thoughts. 
according to the word of god what god says for you and about you keep thinking and have a desire yes i have to change i am a dirty person i have too much of anger you know your own character but god wants me to be like him i should grow in love joy peace patience meekness self control etc etc hmm? think 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 what do you think how do you think you will change hmm? keep changing if you are still taking tablets throw your tablets i am not here as jesus sales rep and selling jesus i am talking the reality of god almighty who is living for each one of us he wants us to live a healthy life he doesn't want us to live being in hospital or taking tablets your heart is enough can you cleanse your heart you can throw your tablets you are stingy isn't it you cannot pay the price your heart is stingy what i am talking you think oh who oh, can live like this chumma she is preaching <laughs> some of you may be thinking some of you may be thinking that is because of the stinginess of your heart your heart cannot pay a price that is human heart make your heart to pay this price and see how your life is changing if your life is not changing if your family is not changing if your children are not changing if your husband or wife or anyone is not changing come and tell me i will give you more tips do exactly like what i am telling and tell me that your family situation is not changing then i will live this profession past 20 years i am doing this profession more than 20 years the moment you say pastor what you are telling nothing i am getting it's impossible you come and tell me after doing this doctor is telling you have a sickness take all these tablets you will definitely healed cured you will not be healed you will be cured only healing god can give healing is permanent cure is what it keeps coming doctors can only cure your sickness the jesus christ can heal your sickness you should understand that difference hallelujah hmm? so doctor is telling you are sick take these tablets your sickness will be cured if you are definitely taking you can see that you are getting better isn't it in the same way i challenge you challenge with me why you are not challenging with me why why tell me hey eh? tell me hey eh? because your heart is stingy your heart doesn't want to pay the price whatever you are giving god to get something tae 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 eh eh morning 2 o'clock you will get up and pray adu kodi devare idu kodi devare adu kodi nam maneyalli adilla adu kodi idu kodi nevu nortta illa devare yake nanage ishtondu problems you will never pray lord change me i am a dirty person change me change my husband or wife change my children change my family what we like in this family is purity holiness will you pray that prayer you will pray lord what we like is money what we like is proper house we don't have an own house lord we want to have an own house how long we are living in a rented house etc etc isn't it that's your prayer you are like this person hallelujah so the condition of your heart affects your thinking and your thinking affects your heart to keep your physical heart healthy you need inner strength understand to heal your heart problem you need inner strength inner strength will heal your sickness write it in your book 100% this is truth if this is not working come and tell me i challenge you hallelujah our thoughts reside in our hearts and mind represents who we are really your thoughts is your personality what you are thinking that's your personality did you understand me hallelujah and the inner person determines our moral character for this reason we are what we think check your thoughts and understand how we can unholy you are inside as a believer in christ you should know about the stinginess of your inner man you have two person you are seeing outside one and inside you are thinking who is there i can't see your thoughts 
But inside of inside, you are thinking, what this lady who has brought me here? Let me go out from this church. Some of you are thinking, why they have brought me to this church? I am talking about that person. Or you will be seeing the clock. I have changed the clock from there to here because you people will be looking at that clock. It used to disturb me. Oh, when this pastor is going to stop, I will not stop. I will get you once in a week. One hour you cannot stay before me. Eh? I am here to brainwash you. your brain. Hmm? Please understand. In your brain, so many dirty things are there. I want to cleanse that. Then you will be blessed. I don't want to cleanse and make you a religious person. Hmm? Understand. I want to make you understand the reality of yourself. That's all. Then it is left to you to accept or not. If you are accepting, we are here to help you all the time to grow in the purity and be successful. Hallelujah. That is Christ's way, church. So you should understand the stinginess of your heart and you should constantly renew your thoughts and strengthen your mind. Inner man can be strong only through your mind, through your thinkings and Ephesians 3, 16, Paul is praying for inner strength for the Ephesian believers. Jeremiah 29, 11, we read, For I know the thoughts that I think for you, says the Lord, the thoughts of peace, not of evil, I give you future and a hope. This is the thought of God Almighty for this whole humanity. Let me read once again. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, the thought of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a good hope. God wants you to have a good life. God wants you to have a peaceful life. God wants you to have a heavenly life. I will always tell if you are living a hellish life here, you will not reach heaven. First, you will enjoy your life. If you are enjoying your life, definitely you are reaching heaven. You are enjoying your family. You are enjoying your husband, wife or children. You are really enjoying your life. Eh? When you reach to that level, you know that, yes, today if I die, I will reach heaven. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, no. Please understand. This is Christ. If you are fearful, if you are angry, if you are always worried, if you are always anxious, you are nowhere. You are nowhere. Be careful. Change your thoughts. So if God will not think bad or evil thoughts towards you and me, who are we to think bad and wrong thoughts about ourselves and for our family? God has got good thoughts for me and for my family. So I should think good for me and for my family, isn't it? Even yourself. God wants me to change and be like him. Who am I to say that I will not change? Isn't it? God wants me to live a pure life and my family members also. So who am I to think the opposite? Dear friends, this is the reality. God thinks good thoughts about you. Think the same thoughts. Yes. I will change, my family will change, they will change, they will change. Looking at today's appearance, don't say that they are not going to change. You change and you sit and pray. Hallelujah. And you can think of your body as a car and your mind as a steering wheel. The steering wheel controls the direction of the car, you know. If you turn it to the right, the car goes right. Eh? You are the steering wheel. Your mind is the steering wheel. If you turn it to the left, it will go left. If you turn it to the right, it will go right. Some people will not turn. Can you go? Because none of the car drive madak barilla very straight. Barten early there. Where you will go? <laughs> you will dash with many things and you will dash yourself also. This example may sound silly, but this is the obvious one. Same principle applies to our life. Our minds and thoughts are our steering wheel. If we keep changing our negative, sinful thoughts according to the word of God, you will be strong inwardly. Definitely, steering wheel is in your hand. You can think everything according to God's word. Or you can sit and think according to what you are thinking. Hallelujah. And First Peter 1.13, we are asked to prepare our mind for action. Prepare your mind for action. It is a commandment in the Bible. That means we should be prepared always in our mind to face our opposition. Jesus told in this world, troubles are there. So we should be prepared. Anything can come anytime. But 
you don't be upset you don't react in a mad way control 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 your character and be peaceful hallelujah so you have to react righteously and have peace don't worry don't be fearful don't be panic you have to practice my friends you may be driving two wheeler or four wheeler today the moment you sat in the car you could be able to no how much practice you did after years you can go in anywhere anyhow you can drive your scooter or car because you have practiced so all these spiritual things what i am talking it may look very strange for you it is very difficult for you but by practice dear friends it is possible and the christians who are not practicing please don't waste time don't waste your time keep practicing hallelujah we experience a continuous cycle of think and feel and think and feel and think and feel isn't it we think and what we think we feel this result in the emotional states you come to experience stressed depressed discouraged angry frustrated why you are sad that is what you are thinking isn't it but now just you think oh pastor is going to stop the meeting eh? oh i will go i will go and i have already planned with my friends what shopping or something you will be so happy from where that happiness came from your thoughts isn't it think feel think feel this is what is happening in this machine of human body where in your inner person thoughts in or of themselves have no power thoughts have power only when you actively think and when you repeatedly think most of the time we are thinking the thoughts very strongly and we are repeatedly thinking for example if you regularly engage in the thought that i am a failure i am not going to improve or my family is useless i don't want this family i am going to run away from this family my father is useless my mother is useless my husband is useless my wife is useless eh that's what you keep thinking isn't it eh? many of you are thinking like that only even after in christ you are not changing that thought even i myself is useless chumma we are living a useless life so life long you will have a useless life nothing is going to change what happens what happens i am going to tell you you are thinking all these negative thoughts or you have anger thoughts bitter thoughts revengeful thoughts you are repeatedly thinking or you have that strong thoughts my dear friends you are doing that what happens you get strong emotions from inside that will strengthen again this thoughts these emotions will energize your thoughts again next day morning you get up and sit and think i am useless my family is useless i am going for a useless job yo oh, how long i will do this useless work eh mantra every day you are doing this that is the reason you cannot cope up with your work your work is becoming boring stressful stressful because of this chanting but you should tell i am going to enjoy my work god has given me this work in this world how many people are jobless and it is very difficult to get a job nowadays god has given me this work at present i have this work i will enjoy yes it is difficult it is tedious it's really taking sucking my blood but i will work i will work i will work god give me strength you get ease from god my friends understand so you are energizing your thoughts to have more wrong thoughts in you so this is how thoughts create reality see you are becoming weaker day by day your work is becoming monotonous day by day why because of these thoughts you should understand change your thought and enjoy your life so how do you change the reality of the stinginess of your heart so what i am talking is about god it is high stuff yes you felt it is high stuff yes my work is boring i have to tell boring but god is telling enjoy that work be grateful to the work that god has given you it is very difficult to get a job nowadays god has given you a work be grateful that is high stuff i am telling you to think eh that's the reason i told for this high stuff your heart is stingy so how do you change your reality of the stinginess of your heart through your minds and thoughts 
you are the planter of your thoughts you are the thinker of your thoughts steering wheel is in your hands to direct whichever the way you want to go you can go to the way what i am talking you will be successful or you think oh these are all nonsense i cannot do because even if you want to make a deal with god it is your business you have come to church for your business some blessing i should get eh that is the stinginess of your heart and with the stinginess of your heart your inner man will never be strong right it if you are making business with god your inner man will never be strong hallelujah so you are the thinker you need to create new thought patterns like how you spend time in prayers dear friends you all spend in time in prayers spend time in meditation thinking spend time in studying the word of god carefully hmm? you go to beauty parlor you go to gym you spend time in cooking food and eat because you want to build the body if you want to build your inner man you have to spend time in god's beauty parlor spend time don't say you don't have time then your inner man will be weaker weaker why your inner man is weak because you are not strengthening your inner man you are not spending time for your inner man hallelujah you should be generous in your thinking you should be generous in your meditation hallelujah so spend time thinking about the scriptures and the characters that have to form in you you are an angry person think i will change i will have self control i will not be like this i will be like jesus christ i will love the people i will forgive the people talk 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 think talk think talk think take time think talk think talk are you doing are you doing you are not doing so you are not changing i will be a profitable servant god has called me somebody came and brought me to church i was not like this years before i will be like that person i will go and tell the gospel and make the people understand jesus is not a christian god jesus is the only god in this world he has not come to convert any religion he has come to convert the heart i will tell talk my dear friends no time isn't it you are very busy then what will happen there is somebody inside you are only thinking about the outside person hmm? if you are bodybuilding person oh little i am fat oh one more hour i have to spend in gym hmm? isn't it you are thinking or oh, here some scars no okay some pigmentation i have to do or my pedicure manicure huh? you will be always see how your nail is looking oh so oh, this i have to do waxing i have to go i have to spend so much of time isn't it you are thinking you are thinking and what you are thinking you are doing it eh? because you want that you want that dear friends understand you and me what we need is inner strength inner strength is our victory inner strength is our health inner strength will give you heavenly life spend time why you are living like a foolish person your heart is already stingy you don't want to pay a price please understand don't be stingy how your stinginess will go spend time with god don't say it is boring it is really you are interested to go to all other places but this is little difficult because your heart is stingy be generous be generous spend time some time study the word of god according to the word of god say i will change i will change god has got good plans for me and my family my family is going to change i will stand for christ can you take that responsibility through you your family will change if god is thinking good thoughts about you you are nobody to think bad about them you are nobody to judge and say that they will never change you never changed years back years back you were not like this now you are changing how in the same way they will change hallelujah be generous in your heart spend time study the word when daily dear friends please spend time in god's beauty parlor in god's gym spend time and build your inner man without which your inner man will become weaker and weaker anything is enough your face is so sad you know happiness eh? 
even if you smile it is a plastic smile what is there inside i can understand i am a spiritual person you will say no pastor i am very happy very happy eh no you may be thinking i can understand your heart i can understand so dear believers it is your need build your inner man spend time with god studying the word meditating the word praying pray and bless your own people and bless your church people bless the world eh? you are doing good things you are building your inner man so be generous in your spiritual activities to strengthen your inner man let's close our eyes in prayers hallelujah